The big hi-fi news of today at the end of August 2021 is from Bowers & Wilkins with their release of the brand new 800 Diamond 4 series of hi-fi speakers. And in this video, I will talk to you about what's new and improved and worth getting excited about. But back in July, I was very lucky to be invited to a pre-release press event demonstration day, which included a factory tour. And I got as much of it on camera for you as I could. So maybe grab yourself a tea or a coffee, sit back, and I hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to start at the end. I was very lucky to get not one, but two demo sessions. First with the brand new 805 D4, and then second with the brand new 804 D4, both sporting their new reverse wrap design cabinets. While this was a very special treat, it was also very much like being at a hi-fi show, listening in an unfamiliar room with someone always hogging the best seat. Ed Selly from AV Forums being the guilty party. Cheers, Ed. From the two demos, the 804 D4 produced technically the best sound, but the 805 D4 was the better demo for me because it was in a room that was the perfect size for the speakers with room acoustics more familiar to me. And the music played was modern with punchy bass to really show off the bass dynamic capabilities of the 805 D4 and also to demonstrate the quality of their top end and they didn't disappoint. They projected a really wide sound stage and sounded very transparent. And this was from a fairly modest Marantz amplifier, nothing crazy high end. All in all, this was a very impressive demo. Then we moved into a much larger room to listen to the 804 D4. And I could tell this room is designed to demo Bauer's much larger speakers. And the 804 would really have their work cut out in a room this size. But they was being fed by an insane amount of power from a Mishi pre and monoblock setup with an Inuos server as the source. Bowers played a very different selection of music to try and demonstrate, again, the dynamic capability of the speakers, but also their three-dimensional imaging, with their ability to create tangible sonic images presented well beyond the speaker's plane, showing off the new driver technologies and cabinet improvements. Now, I wasn't sitting in the best spot for this demo, and the balance of this system wasn't fully to my liking because I prefer more bass, but Jay Garrett, editor at StereoNet UK, who is a bass player, commented how impressed he was with the bass speed and the musical insight from the 804 D4, which is really fantastic praise. It was great to see and hear the brand new Diamond 4 speakers playing in a normal type of environment. Even if the demos were quite short, it was just really nice to get just a bit of a taste of what these new speakers can deliver. I have been trying to get down to the Bowers & Wilkins factory ever since I started Pursuit of Perfect System and I finally got my chance. And it's an amazing place with so much to see and you know things to take in visually and at the same time you're trying to you know pay attention to all of the intricate details of all of the manufacturing processes. So I tried to get as much on camera for you as I could but obviously I couldn't get it all. And I shot the whole thing handheld. So I want to apologize in advance for any shaky footage. The first thing that hits you about the factory is its size. It's huge. The warehousing alone is incredible. And this is a serious manufacturing operation capable of building thousands of high-end, high-quality speakers every year. The second thing you notice is there are lots of high-tech, modern machines used in production. But there is also a lot being done by hand, which is great for that extra touch of quality, but it's also great for creating lots of local employment. When a factory tour starts with this kind of hi-fi eye candy, it certainly puts you in the right mood. Later, I got to see a pair of Nautilus speakers being made. 
seeing the mold for their cabinet, if you can call it a cabinet, was certainly interesting. And it gets you thinking that this is the start of a legendary pair of hi-fi speakers journey to making a lucky audiophile's life that bit better. It was safety goggles on and straight into woodwork to see the infamous Bowers 800 curved cabinets being made. It all starts with thin layers of plywood that are glued together using a new process for the D4s to create the speaker's outer structure that many audiophiles take for granted, but the process is complex with layers being pressed in a machine to form the cabinet shape at very high temperatures. In order to keep the whole woodworking area at a precise humidity, for the wood to be kept in perfect condition, there is a humidity management system that you could see working from time to time. The next stage in the process is really interesting because it requires the curved cabinet that has just been formed to be pulled apart so that the famous Bowers matrix bracing system can be installed using what looks like a medieval torture device. Seeing a matrix bracing system out of a speaker is a very cool thing and not something that you see every day. And you can see the metal used in the new D4 matrix system as one of the improvements. And the bigger the 800 speaker, the more metal that is used. There is also fine wood machining going on for the tops of the speakers and other parts. Intricate milling creates art that you start to appreciate once the speaker takes shape. With the different 800 speaker models starting to appear more as we recognize them. But next they need to be prepared for finishing and like I said some of this is done by hand and some of this is done by automated robots. Which is very cool to see as it feels very advanced and more automotive. Paint coats layers of which many are applied are done by robots. Eight coats for black, seven coats for white. You get the idea. The painted speakers are baked in a stove oven Warburton's would be proud of. And paint layers are given 96 hours to harden before being flattened back and painted again. Depending on the speaker finish, there is also maybe polishing or multiple coats of lacquer applied, all to create a beautiful finish, gloss or satin. Moving up to where the diamond tweeters are assembled, the mood of the factory changes from heavy woodwork to more laboratory, which makes sense when we are talking about dealing with tweeters made from grown diamonds. I still struggle with the concept that the tweeter dome is made of artificially grown diamond, using carbon particles that are highly pressurized and superheated, replicating the process of a millennia in around six hours. And I find this really quite amazing. When you look at the diamond tweeter in isolation, it looks more like it's made of metal, but there is no metal in it at all. And it's only 40 microns thick. There is a finishing process applied to give the tweeter a more diamond look, which is very transformative. I'm sure you will agree. And I was very fortunate to see all the different stages of the tweeters assembly. I was able to see side by side the new solid body tweeter housing of the Diamond 4 next to the housing from the Diamond 3. And you can see it's significantly larger. You can also see how these start as solid tubes of aluminium that are milled down and finished. The Bowers and Wilkins logo on the tweeter housing for the new D4 range is a very nice visual improvement for that extra touch of quality. The new larger tweeter housing has improved internal damping, improved connection to the speaker for safety and stability, and improved isolation from the speaker. The heart of any passive speaker is its crossover, and all the crossovers in the 800 series are hand 
assembled. Have you ever wanted to see a Bowers 800 series speaker crossover? How about the 803, the 802 and 801 crossovers side by side? I found this fascinating to see and you can clearly see that the crossover components used are largely from Mundorf and they get significantly larger as the speaker gets larger. With the individual components used in the 801D4, some costing triple figures each. The turbine head is what I think gives the 800 series speaker their most iconic appearance. And I've always loved the idea of the mid-range driver sitting in its own dedicated enclosure. The turbine head is featured on the larger 800 series speakers, such as the 803, the 802, and the 801. And similar to the tweeter housings, they are milled from one solid piece of aluminium. They start and finish, for that matter, as huge pieces of heavy aluminium. And with the D4, Bowers have improved the internal structure, improved the resonance damping to increase performance. I was lucky to see them being hand painted and finished all by hand. Bowers are continuing their use of the continuum material mid-range and mid-base drivers and how these were made were very interesting but it's Bowers USP and I wasn't allowed to record the process. There is a major improvement to these drivers with the replacement of the Spider with a patented biometric suspension system, a technology developed by Bowers and Wilkins to reduce unwanted air pressure behind the cone and lower distortion. This technology is only featured on the speakers with a dedicated mid-range driver, which is all of them except the 805. For base, Bowers are continuing to use their aerofoil cone technology, a driver that is varied in thickness, thick where it needs to be, thin where it isn't. It has a carbon fiber skin and a light syntactic foam core. There is a new anti-resonance plug for the D4 base drivers that helps to lower distortion. For some reason, the final assembly of the speakers seemed the most exciting to me. Maybe it's because all of those lovely shiny bits are starting to come together. It's a process all done by hand and there is still quite a lot of work to do and parts to install, such as the drivers and their housings. I spoke to one worker while she was assembling the speakers and she told me that she had worked for Bowers and Wilkins for over 11 years, doing all manner of jobs there. So there is a good chance if you have bought an 800 series speaker in that time, she was involved in building them for you. This was also a great opportunity to see something you might not never normally get to, the underside of an 801. And you can see the caster system that is improved for the Diamond 4. And this is there to make it easier to move them around and position them. And then you have integral spikes that you lower and level once you find that perfect spot in your room. Once the speakers are assembled, they join the queue for testing and are measured in an anechoic chamber to be tested to ensure they are performing to standard. All that's left then is for them to be boxed and shipped to their new owners to be loved for many years to come. And I wonder if that will be you or maybe me, we shall see. There is one test that I invented for Bowers and Wilkins for the new Diamond 4 800 range, and that is the sniff test. And the, <laughs> that may seem ridiculous, I know, but bear with me. On the top of all of the speakers in the new range is an aluminium top plate that has a finish of leather by Connolly. And it smells absolutely lovely, just like a really nice brand new car that has a really high quality leather interior. That smell, I'm sure most of you will recognize that smell. So my advice is when you go and have your demo of the brand new Diamond 4 800 series, any of the speakers in the range, give them the sniff test because you won't be disappointed. The 
The big story with the brand new Diamond 4 range of speakers from Bowers & Wilkins is the reintroduction of the A201. That was the legendary speaker that was installed in Abbey Road Studios back in 1980. And the 801 is the new flagship speaker in the Diamond 4 range. The rest of the range I'm sure you are very familiar with. 801, 802, 803 and 804 floor standing speakers and the 805 stand mounts with a dedicated stand. There are two center speakers again with a dedicated stand and there are four different finishes, black, white, rose nut and walnut. The major differences with the 805 and 804 are they have the same reverse cabinet as the larger speakers. The cabinets are improved both internally and externally and obviously they have the improved tweeter housing and more improvements still. The 804 in a way is a special model that gets a lot of improvements because it has the reverse wrap cabinet, it has a new aluminium plinth base which means it's a down firing speaker like the larger models. It also has the dedicated continuum mid-range driver with the biometric suspension. So it feels like the 804 is more like an 803 than ever before. Lastly, how much is all this magnificence going to cost? Prices start at £6,250 or $8,000 for the 805D4, right up to £30,000 or $35,000 for the 801D4. The 804D4 priced at £9,500 or $12,500. Yeah, of course, this is still a lot of money, but it looks like it could be the sweet spot of the range for audiophiles who have more normal sized rooms. Yes, the 803D4 adds the dedicated turbine head and a better crossover with more metal in the structure and other benefits, but it's quite a jump up in price to £16,000 or $20,000. Worth it, I'm sure, if you've got the money, but it's a significant amount of coin more. And I am really hoping to get my hands on some of the new Bowers & Wilkins 800 Diamond 4 speakers soon to review and spend some time with because there's nothing like seeing something being made, seeing how much actually goes into it with all of the crazy obsessive attentions to detail that tie it all together. So I'm really excited and again, I hope to get my hands on some Diamond 4 speakers to listen to and spend some time with soon. And if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the Pursuit of Purpose System YouTube channel if you'd like to see more of these because I have even more coming for you. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you soon. Take care. Bye.